Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring security policies with JWeb Learning Byte. Alright, so what is a security policy? It's basically a set of rules that tells the Juno's security device, SRX in this case, how to treat transit traffic. So if traffic is coming from a user or a device going to another host, we need to figure out if we want to allow that traffic, if we want to allow and log that traffic, if we want to deny and reject or whatever. So it's, it's going to tell the security device what to do with that traffic. All right, here is our example. And in this example, there's a few things I want to point out with the topology. First, we have the VSRX device. And that's where we are going to be configuring these security policies. We have a DMZ server, which is in the DMZ zone, which connects to the VSRX device on the Gigi002 interface. Then we have user one, that is a part of the user's zone, which connects into the VSRX on Gigi001. And then we have an internet connection, which uses interface Gigi003 on the VSRX. And the last thing is that we have an internet server on the internet that we'll be using to uh, test a few different things. Okay, so with the criteria that we need for this example, we are going to be using JWeb to configure these security policies. And we need to allow communication with the following criteria. User one can access the DMZ server with SSH. However, we don't want to allow access to the DMZ server with HTTP and we need to log any attempts. So from user one to the DMZ server, SSH is great, HTTP is not, and we need to log any HTTP attempts. Then the DMZ server and user one can access hosts on the internet. We want to log any sort of attempts just to keep track of what's happening there. And then we need to allow the internet server access to the DMZ server using SFTP. Now with SFTP, it's you know, a secure form to do the uh, FTP or file transfer protocol, and it uses port 22. So it's basically going to be using SSH in that regards. So we'll keep that in mind as we configure our security policies. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface and configure this stuff. All right, here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1. And to begin, we need to configure some security policies. And first, I do want to point out that we are in configuration uh, workspace. And we can scroll over or mouse over the left here. We can see the different workspaces. We're going to be focusing in the configuration workspace for this learning byte. And we need to go to security. And then we need to go to firewall policy, then rules. And you can see here, we have no rules configured. And I do want to point out, you can select global options and you can configure some global options, such as the default policy, such as policy rematch feature, uh, the flow options, and things like that. We don't need that for this example though. So what we need to do now is we need to click the create or new button. And we click that and we get to create a rule. And so we need to name the rule. We'll call this rule user DMZ SSH. If I could spell that right, there we go. And another thing I want to point out is we can configure this as a global policy, but in this scenario, we don't want to do that. We'll configure a global policy later on. If you don't configure it as a global policy, it ends up being a zone-based policy. Then we can select source up top, or we can click next as well. And then we have to specify some source criteria. We need to specify the zone. This is going to be from the user's zone. And we don't need to specify any particular addresses here because there's only one set of addresses in the user's zone. And then we can select the destination option and we can select DMZ. Again, we don't need to select any type of addresses. However, we do need to select some services. So let's click select next to services. And this is SSH. So let's search for SSH. We have the Junos SSH, perfect. Get rid of any. We don't want any in there as well as Junos SSH. It'll actually error out if we try to do that. Click next, advanced security. This is where we select the permit. And we click next. So we have some rule options we can configure such as logging, but with this, recall with this policy, we don't want to log. Or with this rule that is, we don't need to enable logging. Click finish. We get a summary. You can verify that everything's correct here. Click OK. And then we need to create a few more rules as well. Select the new button, create a new rule. We're going to name this rule user 
BMZ HTTP. Remember, we want to block this traffic here. So we select source, uh, we select the user zone, destination, we want to select DMZ services, we'll select HTTP service. Now this is just HTTP, not HTTPS, keep that in mind. Remove any, click OK. Advanced security, we want to select deny. So that's there by default, great. Go to rule options, now we do want to log this. Now with this, we have to set the logging to log at session init time because it's only going to attempt to create the session. There's gonna be no session close happening. So we can click finish on this, click OK. So we have two rules now. Notice how we put rules in this area, users to DMZ, it, it separates them or uh, organizes these rules based on the to from zone. And if they're zone based or global based as well, and we'll see that here shortly. Okay, so the next rule we want to create, we want to create a rule that allows the DMZ server and the user one to access hosts on the internet. So we can set this as a global rule. We'll just say internet access. And for the source, you can't select the source zone here. So we want to select an address. I want to say include specific addresses. And I already have users and servers created here. You could create a new source addresses or new address objects at this point if necessary. Click OK. So we got users, servers, we're going to allow access to the internet. We don't want to set that to any because then we're just going to allow access from anywhere to anywhere. It's not what we want for this scenario. So with destination, we're going to just leave this at any for the addresses and services. Advanced, we want to set this to permit. And under rule options, we set logging, but we, what, what type of logging do we want? It didn't really specify in the criteria, so we can just select both, init and close. Click finish, click OK, and now we have a new global rule. So keep that in mind, this, since it's a global rule, it goes under its own section. Okay, so then let's create one final rule, and this rule is going to allow the internet server to access the DMZ server. So rule name here, uh, we're going to call this internet type, internet to DMZ there. Okay, so the source, we're gonna set internet. We wanna leave that as is. Now, with the criteria, we said just the internet server, so we could lock this down to just that internet server's address. But let's open this up to say any server out there, any user out there needs to access the DMZ server using SFTP. So we just are going to leave that at a address with the source criteria of any. All right, so destination, we need to select first the zone to DMZ, and then the addresses we want to select to include specific, we want to say servers. That's gonna be the range of servers there that's going to uh, that the DMZ server is going to be in. And then services, we need to lock this down. We need to lock this down to SSH because that is what SFTP uses. And then under advanced security, we want to set that to permit and then click next. No rule options to select, click finish, click OK. And that creates all of our rules. Now we can expand these and really look into them, see what's in there. Notice it collapses the one that, ones that we're not selecting. And then we can just commit this configuration. Let's commit this and see what happens. All right, so let's jump to the user. All right, here is the user. Let's open a web browser. Let's attempt to access the internet server. Actually, let's try to access the DMZ server first. And it doesn't work, perfect. Remember that we are logging these attempts and so we'll check that out later. And let's try to access the internet server. Hey, that works perfect. It's just the uh, the default Ubuntu page with Apache 2. I didn't do anything special for this, but it shows us that HTTP is working in this scenario. Okay, so let's close this web browser. Let's open an SFTP session to the DMZ server. And great, that works just fine as well. So that's perfect. So the other thing we need to show is that the DMZ server can access the internet. So let's go to that. So the DMZ server, let's attempt to access the internet server, just a ping. Great, that works, no problem there. And the last thing we need to check is that the internet server can access the DMZ server through SSH. And this looks good. And as you can see, we are logged into the DMZ server. 
All right, so let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface and have a look at things. All right, here is the JWeb interface again, and we want to take a look at the logs because we were logging some of those sessions, if you remember. And so we go to the administration workspace, and then we can go to the devices files workspace that we're in by default, and we can select the log files option. And in here, we have all the different log files, and the log file that we're looking for is the messages log file. So we can just scroll down, and here we can see the messages log file. And we do have the option to download this file, and I'm just going to highlight it so I can see which one it is. There we go. We can download that, and that's going to download the messages file for us. And then we can edit that and look at that. We can see the log files here, and this looks a little ugly. And it's going to help if you have a different uh, editing program other than Notepad. And so with that, it's going to be a little easier. We just jump to the CLI and look for the specific log messages. All right, here is the VSRX1 device. We'll look at the log messages. We'll look for the Juno-HTTP, since that was the application we were blocking or the service that we were matching on. And we can see a few different things here. We can see that we do have flows being denied. That RT underscore flow underscore session underscore deny lets us know that's a session deny message. And you can see here that the session was denied. Source address is 172.25.11.100. That's the user one address. The destination address is the 10.5.5.100. That is the DMZ server address. So great, we can actually log this and keep track of this as well. And so let's also take a look at the sessions that were used to access things on the internet. Remember, we were logging the session creation and the session close. So let's look for that. So what we want to search for is we can search for RT underscore flow underscore session underscore create. We can see here we've got a whole bunch of different messages because there's quite a bit of different traffic that goes out through that. And you can see, I yeah, get to the end of this here. We can see that there's different stuff going out, uh, different messages. You can look at the source destination address. You see a lot of this is uh, UDP DNS type traffic. So this is traffic that is headed out there. Session create, and we can actually change this to close. And we can see the close messages as well. And so that shows us that we have met the criteria of our example. And that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We've discussed security policies and demonstrated how to configure security policies using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.